Hi everyone, I'm Mei Chen Qian. I'm an NYU Shanghai class of 2018 student majoring in physics. In this video, I'm going to talk about measurement-based quantum theoretomata, which is my DERF project. First, what is theoretomata? A theoretomata is a discrete model studied in mathematics, physics, theoretical biology. Cellular automata has applications in computer processors, cryptography, and modeling physical reality. It is also widely used in biology, chemistry, and many other fields. A cellular automata consists of a regular grid of cells, each in one of a finite number of states, such as on and off. For each cell, a set of cells called its neighborhood is defined relative to the specific cell. For example, for this cell, its neighborhood can be the eight cells around it. An initial state is selected by assigning a state for each cell. New generations are created according to some fixed rule. To simplify the study of cellular automata, we first look at elementary cellular automata. Here is an example. The first row is the initial state, and all the other rows below it are generated according to the rule showing above. For each cell, the neighborhoods are the two cells on the left and right of it. Once the rule is fixed, the next generation of each cell can be determined by itself and its neighborhood. The concept of a cellular automata has been generalized to a quantum field, namely quantum cellular automata. As we mentioned before, cellular automata only works on cells with finite states. However, quantum cellular automata allows us to work with superpositions of multiple states. In quantum cellular automata, we are going to use qubits in different states to replace cells in classical model. Similar to classical model, first, we are going to prepare an initial state. And then, we create a unitary matrix as the rule and apply the unitary matrix on the initial state that we prepared. And in the end, different from classical model, we're going to operate a measurement on the new generations we get. First, we're going to prepare the initial state of quantum cell automata. The state space is a Hilbert space, H sigma where sigma, in the simplest case, is 0 and 1. And in this case, a state of cellular automata is just a vector. In preparing the initial state, if we think of the cellular automata as a quantum register having two regions, A and B, where A represents the first row and B represents the second row. We can represent them in two vectors. Before we apply the unitary rule on A, B is empty, so we temporarily represent B as a zero vector and take their products to construct the initial state. After we prepare the initial state, we're going to construct a unitary matrix, which we will use to apply as a rule for the whole quantum cell automata. We first define when to flip the qubits in the B region that we mentioned in the initial state part. At the initial state, all the qubits in B region are in zero states. For the qubits that we want to flip, we use a polyx gate to flip it to 1. For the ones that we do not want to flip, we use an identity matrix to keep it as it is. 
This is a local update rule for each of the qubits. Multiply all the local rules together. We will get a big linter matrix, which works on multiple qubits, namely the whole initial state. This construction work practically was done by programming using Julia, because the constructed matrix for a simple initial state with five qubits is already 1024 times 1024. It's too big to operate by hand. After we constructed the unitary matrix, we apply it on the initial state we prepared to get u times psi a times 0 b. And the last step in this quantum cellular automata model is measurement. There are two different ways to measure the output. One is using computational basis Z to measure. For initial states with no superposition, this measurement will give us exact the same result as classical cellular automata. Second is using computational basis X to measure. In this case, we can get some different results. For example, if the initial state is the superposition of two states on and off, we might get random shifts between plus and minus, etc. When using computational basis X to measure, except for the random shifts between plus and minus, we sometimes can also obtain superpositions of evolutions. It's an evolution of superposition and interference and many other interesting effects. After the measurement, we wipe out the A register to obtain a state 0A psi B and interchange the role of A and B and iterate from the step where we apply D onto U psi A and 0B. In this way, we can keep evolution of cell automata for T steps. The study on quantum cellular automata should not stop at the investigation of how cellular automata behaves under different measurements, different unitary matrix, etc. Instead, we're going to further study on quantum cellular automata in the future. Here are some points that we might be interested in. First, is cellular automata a universal quantum computer? The reason why we ask this question is because classical cell automata is a universal Turing machine, and this has been proved. Is quantum cell automata a universal quantum Turing machine? This can be a problem. Second, almost any quantum logic gate is universal. Since the quantum cell matter, we were using a unitary matrix which can be seen as a quantum logic gate. Is it also universal? After thinking on the first two problems, we might want to prove that quantum cell matter is a universal quantum computer. But how? There is one way that we might be able to prove it. Since almost any quantum logic gate is universal, like pi over 8 and Hadamard gate, etc., we might be able to express our unitary matrix as pi over 8 or Hadamard gate. In this way, we can prove that the unitary matrix is universal. All in all, the study on quantum cell of matter do not stop at the investigation of how it behaves. It will also be extended to what it is and what can we do for it further. After all, I want to thank for my professor Tim Burns 
and many of his intern students, like Andreas and Luis, for help on my dwarf project and study on quantum cell automata. And also, thank you for your listening.